Thank you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, the Ancient of Days. Thank you, our Daddy. To you be all the glory, all the worship, all the adoration belongs to your holy name. In the name of Jesus. Father, we recognize our sins this moment and ask for your mercy. Wash us, O God, with your precious blood. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for your word says, Call on me and I will answer you. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. And even now, as we call on you, Father, we know you are already answering us, O God, and we are asking for your mercy, Lord. Wash us with your precious blood, such that we shall be whiter than snow. In the name of Jesus, thank you, mighty God, because we know you have already opened the windows of heaven. We know that, Father, you are here to bless us in a special way. We know that heaven is already here to touch the, the, the children of God. Mighty God, we give you all thanksgiving, O God. Blessed be your name, O King of kings. May you be on the throne. May you speak to us, O God, in the name of Jesus. We stand against every power of darkness, against today's meeting, every power of destruction, spirit of destructions, powers of destructions. We stand against them now by the power that is in the blood of Jesus. Let the name of Jesus begin to be excelled, begin to be exalted, begin to be glorified in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, ancient of days. We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. Even the minister that you're going to use, Father, we cover him with the blood of Jesus. We cover every ear that will hear the word of God tonight with the blood of Jesus. We are standing against the powers of destruction, every spirit that wants to misrepresent this prayer in any form in the minds of the people. Father, we command such plot of the devil to be arrested in the name of Jesus. We decree that the executive decisions of heaven shall begin to prevail over this prayer in the name of Jesus. We decree that the executive decisions of heaven to bless somebody shall come to pass and let the power and the mandates of heaven cancel every satanic superimposition against the children of God, every satanic agenda against this meeting we can so in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare this prayer meeting a destiny changing prayer. In the name of Jesus, thank you, mighty God. May your angels begin to descend in a special way this moment. We cannot do without you, O oh Lord. Whatever place your spirit is, there is freedom. Father, therefore, may your Holy Spirit begin to descend now. We are raising the altar of fire in this prayer line, the altar of destiny in the prayer line, the altar of glory in this prayer line. In the name of Jesus, let the altar begin to destroy every evil altar, every evil altar, brandishing evil winds again, the children of God. Let the power of God cripple them at this hour. In the name of Jesus, let the blood of Jesus prevail in this prayer line. In the name of Jesus, angels that are meant to bring my testimony shall locate me today. Angels that are meant to bring our testimony shall locate us today. In the name of Jesus, we are praying this night that every satanic oppression be crippled, every evil eye be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Holy Father, even now that your angels are already at work, we give you all the glory, every witch and wizard, anywhere they may be, may they be arrested by the power of the Holy Ghost, we stand against the oppressions of red, black, and white witches, in the name of Jesus, block sucking elements, anywhere they may be, let the fire of God cripple them and destroy their covens, in the name of Jesus, satanic territories, we set you on fire, satanic establishments, we set you on fire, in the name of Jesus, let the power that is the blood of Jesus begin to take over this atmosphere now. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord, we decree that occultic powers will never come into this arena. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord, we pray now that it shall be well with us in the name of Jesus. May God be glorified. In the name of Jesus, we stand against the rulers of darkness. We stand against every power of the powers of the devil, the spirit of powers of the uh, Ariton and the Bazebob and the spirit of Magog and Baal. We stand against them now. In the name of Jesus, thank you, mighty God. Thank you, the ancient of days. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, mighty God. We lift the servant whom you are going to use, O oh God, tonight. We pray that you fill him to the brim with your Holy Spirit, O oh God. Father, fortify him. Father, empower him. Father, speak through him. Father, make way. 
through the message that you will give to us through him. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Father, be the one to speak through him. Father, O oh Lord, release fire again. Let him become a minister of fire. Clothe him with the fire, O oh God. Fulfill your promises, O oh God, in Psalm 104, verse 4. Father, fulfill that word again. To the glory of your name, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, the ancient of days. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. My dear friends in Christ, I have the pleasure to welcome every one of us to the hearts of Jesus and Mary Ministries. As we know very well, it is the tradition of this ministry to celebrate the Word of God, to anchor on the Word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Today, we are going to read Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26, verse 1 to 4. Genesis chapter 26, verse 1 to 4. And I'm reading from New Revised Standard Version Catholic Edition. Now... There was a famine in the land besides the former famine that had occurred in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Gera to King Ab Abimelech of the Philistines. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Settle in the land that I shall show you. Reside in this land as an alien, and I will be with you, and I will bless you. For to you and to your descendants, I will give all these lands. And I will fulfill the oath that I swore to your father. Abraham. I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven, and I will give to your offspring all these lands, and all the nations of the earth shall gain blessing for themselves through your offspring. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus. My dear people of God, a few days ago, we read Genesis chapter 17, verse 1 to 5. And in that message, we saw how God appeared to Abraham when he was 90 years old. And in that divine visitation, God answered the prayer of Abraham. But not in the way that Abraham expected that prayer to be answered. Abraham prayed for a son. He wanted to be a father. And indeed, God answered him and told him, Look, thou shalt be a father, but not just a father of a son, but a father of many nations. In other words, God went beyond the request of Abraham. My dear friends in Christ, God then gave Abraham a son, 
and that son was Isaac. The same God that appeared to Abraham and revealed himself to him and gave him mighty and numerous blessings beyond what eyes could count. As a matter of fact, God asked Abraham to even count the stars, and of course, Abraham could not count the, the stars. So God told him that so shall your blessings be, be, or, or, be beyond number. Amen? And now in Genesis chapter 26, we see a story of what happened to the father, happened to the son. God also appeared to Isaac. And God appeared to Isaac when Isaac was making a very critical decision in his life. A decision that was prompted by the situation in the land where he was. And the Bible tells us that Isaac was living in a land called Gera. Now, Gera is a city in, in the land of the Philistines. And uh, there was a problem in the land. What was the problem? There was famine. Genesis chapter 26 verse 1 says, Now there was a famine in the land. And this was not the first famine. There was another famine that took place in the days of Abraham. You see, what happened to the father also happened to the son again. The father passed through famine, and the son is passing through famine. But the famine that the father passed through, God saw him through that famine. Now, when he came to the time of Isaac, and famine came, Isaac decided to leave the land of Gerah. And that was a natural decision. This was something expected of a wise man to do. But you know what? God told Isaac, do not go anywhere. Don't leave this land. Can you imagine God telling you that kind of thing? You see danger coming, and everybody is leaving, and God is telling you, don't go. Don't leave anywhere. Don't stay. <laughs> I was listening to someone who was sharing his story when he went to the Caribbean for preaching the gospel of Jesus. And there was a news in the CNN that a hurricane, a devastating type, will be hitting the city. And he quickly arranged his stuff in the hotel to head to the airport to fly back to his country. But that night, God appeared to him and said, do not go anywhere. Put yourself in his shoes. <laughs> when he found out that it was God talking to him, he decided he would not go. And so he now waited, because God told him, don't go anywhere. Can you imagine where the inhabitants of the, of the city were living? And uh, a foreigner was the one not living. That looks foolish in the eyes of man. But in the midnight, God woke him up and told him, look through the window. He looked through the window, and uh, was, uh, uh, just in front was the, a big ocean. And he saw a spirit, a demon spirit, riding on a wing, on a wing of a, of a certain type of bird. And God told him, this is the spirit that has come to bring devastation to the land in the form of a hurricane. Now, in the power of my name, command it to go and be destroyed, never to come to this city. And he went into prayers right away. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom I serve, I command you, Leave this city, because a child of God has come in town. Because a man of God is in town. And I tell you, after that prayer, the next day, there was no shock, there was no hurricane, 
none happen in that city. My dear friends in Christ, when God says yes, nobody can say no. There was a famine, and what makes sense was to leave the city. But God told him, don't leave the city. Stay here. It, can you imagine that kind of situation? There was an economic crisis in the land. All right? And uh, as uh, Isaac prepared <laughs> to get a visa to travel, he received a visitation telling him, don't go anywhere. My dear friends in Christ, Sometimes God comes with surprises. He wants to see how we will trust Him. Whether we are going to anchor on His word. When I seek hear the voice of God, and then He now listened to God. And God told him, do not go to Egypt. Because Isaac had a plan to go to Egypt, to settle in the land. <laughs> But God told him, don't go anywhere. And he obeyed God. And you know what happened? Everywhere in the land of Gera was experiencing famine. But not Isaac. There was a famine in the city. There was a famine in every family. But there was surplus. In the family of Isaac. You know why? Because God was with him. When God is with you, it does not matter the situation you are passing through. It does not matter where you are. God can bless you in a dirty village. In a hopeless land. In a land called barren. God can bless you in a season of famine. God can turn ugly situations into your favor. Where the wells of people have no water, God can put well, water in your well. God can put oil under, on, under you. There is nothing that God cannot do. Many of the mistakes we make in life is that we lean on our own understanding and despising the, the plan of God, despising the plan of, of God for us. If we would be able to listen to God, many of the mistakes we make today, in fact, none of them will be made. But we trust in our intellect, we trust in our hearts, and we forsake God. Psalm, the Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will make your way is straight. Your path straight. That is the word of God for somebody tonight. My dear friends in Christ, a time has come and now is the time to listen to God. As we listen to God, surely God will show up. As we listen to God, surely He will strengthen us. As we listen to Him, He will surely show up and vindicate us. He will make a way for us where there is no way. He will fight every battle that we need to fight. When God spoke to Isaac and told him, stay in the land. And this land was a land in famine. And God promised him and said, in this land where you are an alien, where you are a foreigner, I am going to bless you in this land. And I'm going to bless your descendants in this land. In fact, even though you are a foreigner in this land, I have already given you the blessings of this land. Meanwhile, this was a foreigner. Okay? But God was telling him, this is your land. This is where I'm giving to you. I don't know whether you're a foreigner in the, in the place you are hearing me now. But do you know that God can give you the blessings of this land? Do you know that God can give you the gold in this land? That it can be yours. Can you appropriate that by your prayers? It is time to call on the Lord Almighty. I don't know the famine in the land. Maybe there is a famine of job. People are not getting certain job, and maybe the, the competition is very high. Things are not going so well. Media is not giving a good report of economic situation. But God says, when He has mandated you for a favor, that you will make it. 
God is saying, for those who belong to him, their joy does not depend on what is happening around them. That their own economy is not the economy run by the human government, but an economy of the heaven. And I'm praying tonight, may the economy of heaven locate you. May the economy of heaven fight your battle. Where you are struggling with the famine, may God bring surplus your way. May God fight your battle. May God make a way where there is no way for you. Whatever thing that has been engaging you in a struggle, in this foreign land where you are a foreigner, may God make you the head and not the tail. In the name of Jesus, let God show up. Let him show up. Call on God concerning your situation. Call on him to show up. Ask him to show up. Ask him to show up. Oh, Jesus. As you call on him, he will show up. Call on him now. Call on him now. As you call on him, he will vindicate you. Our God is a mighty God. Call on the mighty God. The God of Abraham. The God who will turn the land of famine. Even the severe famine in the land. The Lord will turn it into the favor of somebody. In the time of Elijah, there was no rain in the land for three and a half years. But in the desert, God sent the ravens of the air to bring food for the servant of God, for his minister. And God provided water in the brooks. I pray that God will provide water in the brooks for you. That God shall send the ravens of the air to bring your blessings. Where you are sick, may God bring healing your way. May the wind of healing blow your way. May the favor of God blow your way. May God change your story. May He change your ugly story. In the name of Jesus. Let Him show up. Let Him show up. Begin to call on Him now. Begin to call on Him now. There is nothing that God cannot do. Maybe you are in your own draft season. But God can change that draft season into a season of testimony. He can turn that season of mourning into a season of testimony. There is nothing that God cannot do. Oh, Jesus, that empty vessel, may God replenish it. May God restore it. That empty well, that system, oh, Jesus, let it begin to bear fruit again. May that empty womb begin to bear fruit again. Maybe you have been put to shame. Maybe you have been humiliated. Maybe people have reproached you. Because your well is dry. May God put water in your well. And the Bible says, Isaiah chapter 12 and 3, With the joy, they shall fetch water from the wells of salvation. It is time to fetch water. It is time to scoop water from the well that used to be dry. May God give you favor. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Let him touch you. Let him touch you. Let him make a way where there is no way. In the name of Jesus. Begin to talk to him now. Begin to talk to him now. Our God is here. He is here to show up. He is here to vindicate you. He is here to touch you. He is here to bless you. Talk to him now. Talk to him now. Jesus. Jesus. Call on him. Call on him. The Bible says, call on him and he will answer you. Have you called on him? Call on him now. He will answer you. Oh, Makaya Baba. Father, answer your people. Your word says, call on me. And then your word says, and I will answer. In Romans 10, verse 13, and the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Therefore, my children, my own people of God, let us call on him now. As we call on him, as we seek him, we shall see him. He shall answer. Jeremiah 29, verse 13. And the Bible says, You shall seek me, and you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, if you pray this prayer with all your heart, surely you will see the vindication of God. You will see God appearing in your situations. In the name of Jesus, He will give you victory over that situation. John 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world, you shall have tribulations, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Jesus is talking to somebody that he has overcome that famine. He has overcome that crisis. He has overcome that shame in your life. He has overcome that tribulation you are passing through. 
Call on him now. Ask him to show up. He will rescue you from oppression. He will rescue you from that disaster. Psalm 72 verse 14. And the Bible says, He will rescue them from oppression and even from violence. For precious in their eye, in his eye is their blood. Do you know that you are precious in the eyes of God? And God says in Psalm 72 verse 14, that he will rescue you from oppression. That he will rescue you from violence. That he will rescue you from the powers, from the plots of the enemies. May God answer you tonight. Begin to talk to him now. Call on him now. The Bible says that in him there is hope. In him there is hope. Romans 5 and 5 says, And hope in Christ do not put us to shame. Hayaba karabada. Talk to him now. He will make a way for you. Begin to pray now. He's us. As you call on him, he shall overturn the mountains by their roots. According to Job 28 verse 9. He shall turn the mountains into ashes. According to Jeremiah 51 verse 25. And he shall give you victory. Let us run to him now. Let us run to our fortress. Our God is our fortress. Let us run to him now. Who is your fortress? Who is your fortress? Is that Jesus? Is Jesus your fortress? He will not put you to shame. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 12. And the Bible says, Let us return to our fortress. Return to your fortress, Jerusalem. Return to your fortress, Zion. It is time to return to our fortress. Who is your fortress? Proverbs 18 verse 10 says, My fortress is the Lord Almighty. He is a strong tower. The righteous will run to him and are safe. Yes, my Lord. Let us run to him. Let us run to him. In returning to him, we shall have peace. Therefore, let us run to him. In the name of Jesus. I don't know the situation you are passing through. May, may God show up. May God show up. May he vindicate you. May he provide the power that part in your life. May he give you that testimony. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. My dear people of God, there was a famine in the land. <laughs> and it was in the midst of this famine that God was giving promises to Isaac that he would settle him in this land. The land that everybody, people were running out of the land, running away, going to another country to settle. God told him, don't go anywhere. Let them leave. And leave the blessing for you. <laughs> Jesus. And God had to remind Isaac of the promises he made to his father Abraham. So I will give you all these lands. And I will fulfill the oath that I swore to your father, Abraham. Can you imagine God swearing that he will bless you? You think he will not fulfill it? Our God will fulfill every promise he has made for you and to you. He will not disappoint you. Remember Psalm 119 verse 89. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heavens. Whatever thing God has promised you will come to pass. And so God then told Isaac in Genesis 26 verse 4, I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven. And I will give to your offspring all these blessings. And all the nations of the earth shall gain blessings for themselves through your offspring. God fulfilled all these things. If you go down to verse 12 to 13, you see where God blessed Isaac so wonderfully to the point that when Isaac sowed a seed in the land, at the end of the year, he reaped a hundredfold. Can you imagine a hundredfold? That was what he was reaping. And God said, the Bible says, it was so because the Lord was with him. The Lord was with him. When God is with you, you will go to places. 
It doesn't matter whether you are rejected. But when God is with you, you will be accepted. When God is with you, those who rejected you will celebrate you. Just because God is with you. Show me a man that the whole world rejected. But God is with him. And I will show you a winner. And I will show you a man who is a celebrity. A man of victory is a man that God has identified with. Because God was with Isaac. Even though that the land was a land of famine, God blessed him. The Bible also made us to understand that the land of Gera, the people of Gera, started to envy Isaac because everything he touched was blessing. So they envied him so much that they started to plan evil against him. But while they were persecuting him, while they were planning evil against him, even covering the wells, because at a point, the only well in the land was the well of Abraham, which Isaac inherited. And that was the clean well, drinkable well, drinkable water. And people were coming from different places to come and fetch water from the well of Abraham. Because God was with him. His well could not run dry. You see the reason why this prayer is for you. That where people go and fail, that there you will go and you will succeed in the name of Jesus. People may have dug wells, and they, they go there and their well is dry. But I pray for you tonight. And it happened in the time of Isaac, where the well of his father could not dry, even though the land was dry, even though the land was in famine, even though there was no water in the land. So I pray that God will put water in your well. May God put children in your womb. May God put favor in your destiny in the name of Jesus. I don't know what you are passing through, but I pray that this prayer of tonight will change your ugly story in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says that the people started to fight Isaac, but the more they were fighting him, the more God was blessing him. At a point, they moved him away from the land of his, uh, the land where he was. And uh, Abra Isaac had to leave that place and relocate it to another place. And uh, God will see, bless that place. You see, when you are anointed, it doesn't matter where you go. When, uh, whether the enemies are fighting you, the more they are fighting you, the more you are growing. And for a child of God, the fertilizer of your spiritual growth, one of the things that fertilizes you is even persecution. Remember that it was by persecution, early persecution against the early Christians, that was even why they were even growing in number. They were even going to other places, winning souls for Christ. And so, my dear friends in Christ, I pray that where you are persecuted, may God silence your enemies by blessing you more in the name of Jesus. I pray that God will bless you so much that you become blessing to others in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. And so God bless Isaac so mightily. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 26 verse 14 that God blessed him to the point that he had possessions of flocks and herds and a great household so that the Philistines envied him. The Philistines envied him. Wow. They envied him. And the Philistines had, had stopped, stopped up and filled with earth all the words that his father's servant had dug for him. In other words, can you imagine the wickedness, the envy was so much that they thought that the blessings of, of Isaac was coming from the well. So they had to go and cover the well with earth, cover it with mud. Instead of leaving the water, at least this man had been allowing people to come and fetch water, and there was no good well, good water in the land, why coming to cover the, the water that all people were even strangers were even coming to drink from. You see, envy is a wicked spirit. Envy blocks the, 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 the mind. It makes the mind to, to be thinking evil, it, even hurting himself. A, an envious person hurts himself. You're not even hurting the person you're envying. You are just hurting yourself. Can you imagine... You need water, and you, the well that from where you get the water, you are going to cover it with, with mud. So tomorrow, where are you going to drink water? Because they were blind. Envy blinded them. And so God now said, okay, you know what, uh, Isaac? We'll leave this place for them and go to another place. They went to that place. Let me tell you the testament of the scripture. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 26, verse 16, And uh, 
when he went to that place, to the foreign, another land, another settlement, and the God blessed Isaac, go away from us, as Abimelech told Isaac, you have become too powerful for us. <laughs> Jesus, I love this, man. That is, the enemies were so humiliated by the presence of this man, that even the king of Gera, the man called Abimelech, the king had to tell, even he joined to envy Isaac. Can you imagine when a king is envying a stranger, a foreigner? That's a serious matter. And he told him, leave our land for us. You are too powerful for us. And he left. Genesis chapter 26, verse 17. He left. <laughs> and he camped in a valley of Gera and settled there. And he dug another well. He dug another well. And you know what? The water came out. And the Philistines came and envied him again. <laughs> they started to fight him again. Because the water was so clean. See that? The Bible says in verse 19 that, that they found a spring of water. You know why this is happening in the life of this man? Because God was with him. When God is with you, it doesn't matter where you go. It doesn't matter how empty the land is. The anointing will flow. Anointing will single you out. The water will see flow. You dig the well, you, the land, the water will come out because of the anointing. Because God is with you. Because God is interested in your affairs. Many of you have been digging wells without water since you landed in the land you consider to be the land of promise, the land you consider to be a land that will be a blessing to your life. But ever since you come, you have never seen that blessing. You are struggling. I pray that the anointing in the life of Isaac will come upon you, that where you are struggling, may God grease your elbow. Where you are struggling, may God fight your battle. I don't know the powers that are fighting you. I don't know the power that are covering your well. When you dig and you are scooping water, and you are happy that you are not having water to drink, the enemy will come and cover the water with mud, making it undrinkable, making all your suffering to be in vain. I don't know who is this story. I don't know whose story is this. But I'm praying for you at this hour. May God vindicate you. May God relocate you into a place of favor. May God give you another well of promise in the name of Jesus. May your well begin to spring water in the name of Jesus. May your womb begin to spring children in the name of Jesus. May your business begin to spring profits in the name of Jesus. May your destiny begin to spring breakthrough in the name of Jesus. May your prayer life begin to be a fire. In the name of Jesus, may you find favor of God. In the name of Jesus, may God strengthen you. Whatever power that is contending with your efforts, whatever power is contending with your hard work, may God fight you for you. May the God of Isaac fight for you. May God fight for you. In the name of Jesus, I don't know the power that is envying you. May God make you too powerful for them. And the Bible says, Genesis chapter 20, verse 16. And Abimelech said to Isaac, Leave our land. Go away from us. You have become too powerful for us. May God make you too powerful for your enemies. Begin to pray that prayer now. In the name of Jesus, my Lord and my Father, make me too powerful for my enemies. Make me too powerful that the enemies cannot handle me again. Father, make me too powerful, O oh Lord, that they cannot handle me again. Father, make me too hot for them to handle. Let this sickness never take me to the grave. Make me too hot for this sickness. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray right now. Begin to call on the Lord. Ask Him to make you too powerful. Makata Rabba Keriba. My Lord and my Father. Make me too powerful, O oh God. Make me too powerful. That this sickness will not succeed. That this evil shall not succeed. That this 
schemes shall not succeed. That this contentment, this evil, this conspiracy shall not succeed. That every part of the contending with my life, they shall not succeed. In the name of Jesus. Every part covering my efforts, covering my glory, covering my destiny, covering the well I have dug for these years. Father, let them not succeed. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. May God put confusion in the kingdom of darkness. I'm a Father, begin to pray, my people of God. Let God put confusion in the kingdom of darkness. I don't know the conspiracy that's against you. I don't know the power that is ganging up against your life. But I'm praying and calling upon the God of Isaac. Let God scatter their plans. Let God scatter their plans. Let God scatter their plans. In the in the name of Jesus. Jesus. My dear friends in Christ. Genesis chapter 26 verse 13. And the Bible says, And Isaac became rich. He prospered more and more. Until he became very wealthy. <laughs> Do you hear that? In the land of famine, God prospered Isaac more and more. While famine was going from one degree to higher degree, to the same extent and even greater, Isaac was growing from strength to strength. Having more blessings. Even his household, even his slaves, all of them were blessed because of him. Blessed to the point that he became envied. <laughs> you see the prayer of this night? In as much as we are praying for God to bless us, but also. Do not cry when the enemy starts to envy you, because surely you will be envied. But may God of Isaac protect you in the name of Jesus. Not minding the this, this storm in the land, the storm of famine in the land, God was busy taking this man from one level to the higher level. <laughs> Is that what you want in your life? I tell you tonight, that God has not changed. That God has not changed. The God that provides for us according to riches in glory, that God has not changed. That famine that came in the land of Gera, meant to kill people in the land, meant to destroy families, even meant to kill and destroy Isaac. But because God was with Isaac, that famine could not touch him. That famine could not kill him. Oh my goodness. That reminds me, Job chapter 5, verse 20. In famine, he will deliver you from death. In battle, from stroke of the sword. I pray for somebody this moment. May God deliver you from famine. May God deliver you from attacks, spiritual attacks. From that arrow of death, may God deliver you. Job 5 verse 20 says, In famine he will deliver you. But that is not your prayer. May God deliver you in a time of famine. May God deliver you in a time of famine. Oh, Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Job chapter 5 verse 19. From six troubles, he will deliver you. Even in the seventh, evil will not touch you. I am praying for you that this story you are passing through will end up in testimony. In the name of Jesus. May God bless you from Zion. In the name of Jesus. Every famine attacking your business, attacking your destiny, attacking your integrity, attacking your family. May God deliver you now. That is the promise of God for you. In Job 5 verse 20, that in famine, that the Lord says, in famine I will deliver you from death. May that be your prayer now. Begin to pray now. 
God deliver me from every famine. In the name of Jesus. Let him deliver you from famine. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Let him deliver you from that death. Oh, Jesus. Psalm 33 verse 19. And the Bible says, That Lord will deliver your soul from death. May God deliver your soul from death. And to keep you alive in famine. Psalm 33 verse 19b. And the Lord will keep you alive in famine. Psalm 37 verse 19. And in the Bible says, They will not be ashamed in a time of evil. And in the days of famine, they will have abundance. And the Bible says, Psalm 144 verse 10. Who gives salvation to kings? Who rescued David and his king from the evil? It is the name is the Lord. Yes, my Lord. May that God deliver you. May that God vindicate you in the name of Jesus. Where the enemies have taken your blessing to and locked it up in satanic bunker. May God destroy that spirit and bring back your blessings. Let there be restoration now in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Begin to pray, my people. Let God decorate you. In the time of famine, may God bring abundance to you. In the name of Jesus, when people are crying because of famine, may God make you to laugh. May He begin to laugh, make you laugh. In the name of Jesus, because the Lord is bringing abundance your way. In the name of Jesus, in the land of Gera, people were crying. People were in, in, in cr crisis. There was storming everywhere. Oh, Jesus. But there was a family that was laughing. A family was smiling. A family was celebrating. A family was joyful. Because God has blessed them. Because the favor of God was upon them. Are you that family? I am praying for you now. May God make you to laugh. In the midst of crisis, may you begin to be celebrated. In the name of Jesus. And the Bible says, Job chapter 5 verse 22, you will laugh at destruction. You will laugh at famine. And you need not to fear any wild animal. Yes, my Lord. I don't know the famine that's against you that are come to destroy you. The Bible says, Job 5 verse 22, that you shall laugh at that destruction. You shall laugh at that famine. It is time to laugh at them. It is time to laugh at them. The name Isaac means laughter. Laughter follow the words of Isaac. I am giving you the name Isaac today. I am giving you a new baptism. I am giving you the name Isaac today. I brand you Isaac in the name of Jesus. That laughter shall follow you. That laughter shall follow you in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. And the Bible says, no wild animal shall destroy you. You need not to fear any wild animal. Who is that wild animal coming against you? What is that cancer that is coming against you? What is that lion that is coming against you? What is that leopard, that lion, that evil spirit, that leopard, that evil power, that very Goliath coming against you? May God destroy them tonight. May God break their jaws tonight. They shall not eat your flesh. Every eater of flesh shall eat their own flesh. So the Bible says in Judges 14 verse 14, the eater has been eaten. May God eat the eater. May God destroy the eater. That power of the devil, that enemy that have been eating your flesh, may their own flesh be eaten. From the eater cometh something to eat. Judges 14 verse 14. May that be your testimony. In the name of Jesus, that ugly soul will not succeed. In the name of Jesus, May God bless you. May God strengthen you. May God fight your battle. Yes, my Lord. And the Bible says, Job 8, verse 21, He will yet fill your mouth with laughter. He will yet fill your mouth with laughter. And He will fill your lips with the shouting of joy. I am praying for you. A season of joy has come. A season of laughter has come. A season of shouting of celebration has come. May God look at you. May God bless blessing to you. May God give you victory. In the name of Jesus. Father, touch our people. Daddy, deliver your people. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus, I don't know the pestilence that is against you. I don't know the havoc that is against you. But the Bible says they can also see. Psalm 91 verse 6. And the Bible says of the pestilence that stalks in the darkness. Oh, of the destruction that lays waste as noonday. They shall not come near me. They shall not locate my family. They shall not locate my business. Because the Lord is interested in my family. The Lord is interested in the affairs of my life. He shall be well with me in the name of Jesus. Let the people begin to pray. My people begin to pray now. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. And the Bible says, Psalm 91 verse 
13. You will tread upon the lion. You will tread upon the cobra. Even the young lions and the serpents. You will trample them down. It is time to begin to trample down. Every spirit of famine that is encroaching my territory. I begin to trample them now. Begin to trample them now. In the name of Jesus. Begin to trample them now. Begin to tread them down. By the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. My people begin to pray now. Begin to pray now. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Masa Kayaba. He will deliver you now. He will deliver you now. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. When God is with you, <laughs> doesn't matter who's against you. All right? Isaiah chapter 41, verse 14. And God will tell him to Jacob, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not fear. For I myself will help you. <laughs> God says, I will help you. You can imagine when God is saying, I will help you. It's all the same thing as man saying, I will help you. God promised Isaac in the land of famine, I will help you. I will see you through. And I will give you this land. People call you an immigrant, but they are immigrants. Not you. Soon, it will see it happen. That's what God was telling Isaac. While he was getting ready with his visa to leave the land of Gera, to leave the Philistine land, God told him, don't go. You don't even need that visa. They are the one that need visa. This is your country. This is your land. I've given to you. That was what God was telling Isaac. He believed God, and God blessed him. <laughs> when you believe God, even when evidence, physical evidence is contrary to God's promises, and yet you believe God, watch out. <laughs> you will laugh. You will laugh. Remember that Abraham believed God against all odds. Against all odds. At the age of 90, God was still telling him, I'll give you children. And he still believed. Then he came to the age of 99. If you read Genesis chapter 17 verse 1, and when God, uh, Abraham was 99 years, God appeared to him. By that time, Abraham had no child. Isaac came at the hundredth year. You see that? But he continued to believe God. Against all odds, he continued to believe God. So was Isaac. He continued to believe God. This is the lineage of people who believe God in spite of all odds. Can we believe God? Is part of medical reports. Can we believe God in part of the evidence that is on, 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 on the ground? Can we believe God? Even when everyone is against you, can you believe God that your story will, will, will change, that God will give you testimony? Can you believe God? God is talking to somebody tonight. Maybe you you come from a family where everyone who gets married leaves family, leave the marriage by way of divorce or by death, sudden death. And in a family you see such a pattern, your own will not be the same if you believe the promise of God for you tonight. I was talking with a sister the other day. Five girls from the same mother, all of them came out from their marriage. And her own was shaking. You see that? Your story can be different. There may be famine in the land. Famine touches everybody. Famine touches every living thing. Even, even the goats, even the animals, even the trees, the plants, they all suffer famine. We're not even talking about human beings. Even the kings suffer famine. When famine comes, it's a horrible thing. It's a horrible thing to pass through famine. But in the same land of famine, God was blessing somebody. 
May you be that somebody in the name of Jesus. <laughs> when God remembers you, it doesn't matter who is against you. It is better for God to remember you. Job 8 verse 1 says, He will fill your mouth with laughter. Come on. It's time to laugh. May God give you reason to smile. May he give you reason to give testimonies. May he give you reason to laugh. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. This morning, someone was calling me from overseas. When I picked the call, she would just cry of tears. Cry of tears. Brother, brother, God is amazing. I don't know the kind of God you serve. I said, sister, what is the problem? Her friend was kidnapped for one complete month plus. She had been kidnapped. Demand, the people were demanding millions. The husband had gotten tired, given up. Somehow, somebody told her of what God is doing in the house of Jesus and many ministries. And she brought the matter to this amazing ministry. We stormed the heaven with prayer. I remember when I was telling her, just on, I think that was on Saturday or so. I said, sister, don't worry. Watch out what God will do. Stay, will do. That's what I told it. Watch out what God will do. Just watch out. Our God answered. And she was released unconditionally. Just God, God stepped into the occasion and situations changed. I don't know who it is in a spiritual captivity hearing my voice now. Maybe you're in a spiritual prison. May God open the doors of that prison that you may come out in the name of Jesus. May God break the shackles that the bronze gates may be broken in the name of Jesus. You can't be coming to this ministry every day without testimony. It's forbidden. It's forbidden. <laughs> Jesus. Father, I lift up the banner of testimony for your children that the stubborn situations will begin to melt right now. Let the stubborn situations every famine. Famine is a stubborn situation. I command every famine. I command that stubborn situation. Expire in the name of Jesus. Your time is up. You spirit of famine, expire in the name of Jesus. Expire in the name of Jesus. Expire in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. The God that changed the life of, Ab of Abraham forever, when he appeared to Abraham, the same God appeared to Isaac and he changed his life forever. May that God appear to you today. May that God appear to you in this ministry. May that God show up in your life. May that God vindicate you. May that God show you heavenly things in the name of Jesus. Let him change your ugly story. That God will change your story tonight. He changed the story, the ugly story of Isaac. He changed the ugly story of his father. Even now, you change your story. This is time for your ugly story to be changed. Our God is story changer. Our God is story changer. Begin to talk to him now. That let him change your story. The same way he changed the story of Isaac. Let him change your own story. Famine was about to terminate the life of Isaac. But God changed that story. And blessed this man so mightily. To the point that the blessing was in excess. He was living in abundance while in the land of famine. And God was with him. And he was going from strength to strength until he became so powerful than his enemies. 
May God make you so powerful, more than your enemies, in the name of Jesus. May God change your story. Begin to talk to him now. Say, God, change my story. You are my story changer. You are my story changer. God, my story changer. Father, change my story. In the name of Jesus, let this my ugly story change. You did it for Abraham. You did it for Isaac. You even did it. Even for Jacob. Father, this is my turn. This is my turn. Let heaven remember me. This is prayer and I come all the time. And I hear people's testimony. How you have changed your stories. How you have changed their stories. They are ugly stories. Papa, change my ugly story. Father, do the kingdom. Father, touch me with testimonies. Father, open the windows of heaven. In the name of Jesus. Father, change my ugly story. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. God is my story changer. And that's the title of this talk. God, my story changer. God, my story changer. <laughs> when God comes into your valley of death, He cannot leave you there. How can He leave you? Has He come meet people in misery and leave them? Huh? That God will vindicate you. That God will deliver you. That God will destroy the power of darkness working against your life. That's our God. His name is Jesus. Whatever you are passing through, He is more than able to deliver you. I don't know the power that has sworn that you shall not move forward. But under the anointing of my story changer, may you begin to move forward. May you begin to march forward. May you begin to progress now. May your prayer life begin to progress now. May you go from strength to strength. Even as the lion goes, goes from strength to strength. May you begin to experience a new dispensation in your life and relationship with Jesus. May your prayer life become full of fire in the name of Jesus. May you become too hot for enemies to handle in the name of Jesus. That sickness cannot handle you again. That sickness cannot handle you again. My horrible in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Most times, you don't get what you, what you struggle for because the enemies are stopping you. You don't get what you desire in life. You struggle, work hard, you go to school, nothing to show. I was talking with a young man Recently, he was telling me how he used to be considered not just a rich man, but the dream of so many people. I mean, God blessed him at a young age, made him millionaire, dealing with federal governments, dealing with countries, doing business with, with heavy corporations. But at the time he was talking with me, he was struggling to pay for his apartment. Apartment. Because there was a power that came against him to stop him. The power kidnapped him from the land of abundance to the land of scarcity, the land of famine. I don't know who is a victim of such spirit. But I'm calling upon the God of heaven and earth, the God of David, that destroyed Goliath. May that God answer tonight. May that God answer tonight.
Let him fight a battle tonight. Let him fight a battle tonight. In the name of Jesus, let him deploy his angels to fight a battle tonight. In the name of Jesus, may God vindicate you now. In the name of Jesus, may God make way for you where there's no way. In the name of Jesus, may God give you reason to move forward. It is time to move forward. Every mountain stopping your life. Every mountain stopping your life. I command that mountain to melt by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. <laughs> you do all you are supposed to do. People give you all sorts of advice. Yet, no change of story. Today, there shall be a change of story. We are in agreement that my story changer shall change my story. My story changer shall change your story. God is the one who changed my story. I gave him a promise. When the devil was against me, kidnapped me, dealing with me, and I thought there was no hope again. And I made a promise to God. I said, God, if you deliver me from this mess, if you deliver me from this captivity, I will serve you forever. And that's the reason why I hear my voice this night. Because he delivered me. He changed my ugly story. Jesus is my story changer. As he changed my story, I am crying to him tonight on your behalf. Let him arise and change your story. Let him arise and be your story changer. Oh Lord, change this ugly story of my people. Father, they are desiring change in their situations. Papa, deliver them. Where they are struggling, Papa, give them victory. Where they are struggling, Papa, give them solutions. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> oh. sometimes you need to plan and bring your plan to God and God will bless your plans and we are bringing everything to God tonight even our cry our tears to Him all those tears you have been pouring all these years, because you have struggled and you have nothing to show, may God change your story. I pray that the wombs that have been labeled clinically barren, incapable of bearing children, may God change the destiny of such wombs. May my story changer change the ugly situations of those wombs, families that are passing through tossing up and down in the hands of the enemies, may my story changer quench that storm. In the name of Jesus, may God deploy his angels to subdue the enemies against your life. In the name of Jesus, may he deploy his angels to crush and destroy every power attacking your destiny. In the name of Jesus, every spirit that is forcing you to walk a walk on the path of death, on the path of shame. May God destroy them tonight. Today you are walking from barrenness to fruitfulness. In the name of Jesus. From today you are walking from famine into abundance. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. May God show up in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> May he bless you. Do you hear me? I say, may God bless you. May he be your water of life. May he remember you. Jesus. May he never leave you the way you are. May he change your story. Jesus. Lord, do not let me leave place of change to struggling. This is a ministry you have been using to change the ugly situations of people. Father, let my people never go disappointed. Where God is wiping the tears of people in this ministry, may he wipe your own tears. 
No matter how bad your situation may be, God is capable of giving you the change because He's your story changer. <laughs> Jesus. You may be going through fierce economic situation, or maybe the country where you are is going through fierce economic and social and political challenges. But you know what? God will make way for you. Let him change your story. Let him change your story. He is my story changer. Jesus. Let him change your story. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Papa, change my story. Change my story, Lord. You change the story of Esau from struggling. Change my story. You change the story of even your son, Isaac. Father, change my story. Jesus. Even if Jabez was a man of story, story, story. But you change his story. Father, I'm tired of story, story, story. Oh. Change my story from lack to more than enough. Lord, change my story of my family from being in the valley to locate me to the mountain top. Father, locate me in the valley and put me on the mountain top. Father, change my story from shame to honor, from limitation to progress, from defeat to success, from disappointment to appointment in the name of Jesus, from falling to rising in the name of Jesus, from weeping to joy in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Papa, change my story from weeping to joy, from trouble to peace, from closed doors to open doors, in the name of Jesus, from lack in business to great success story, in the name of Jesus. Father, make me a success story, in the name of Jesus. Papa, I need change. You take care of beds. Father, take care of me in this situation. Let there be supernatural power for change. Look at me. Jesus. Jesus. Blessed be your name. For we know you have answered us. And we cover this prayer with the blood of Jesus. We cover this prayer with the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Whatever bless you are, begin to thank the Lord. Begin to thank the Lord for all he has done in the course of this prayer. Just begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Begin to thank the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Abraham. Thank him now. Thank him now. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you for changing my ugly story. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because you are the God who changes times and seasons. Now you have changed my season from winter to summer. Father, thank you. With you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Winter is no more. No more winter. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 11. And the Bible says, Jesus, yes, my Lord. Yes, my Lord. No more winter. Yes, my Lord. The winter is over. The rains are over. Because God has come to change this my season. My spiritual season. Thank you for changing my, my story from dryness to fruitfulness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. To you be all the glory. To you be all the worship. To you be all the adoration. In Jesus' super mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. We'll cover this prayer with the blood of Jesus. We'll cover this prayer with the blood of Jesus. And we'll cover this prayer with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen.